Well, moisture management is a big topic to start with in a homeowner or a builder or someone like that. The important thing to know is that it's not a one problem problem. It's a, you got to balance wetting, drying, and storage. And so just trying to stop the building from getting wet is only one part of the problem. The other thing is to make sure you can get drying. And how much wetting and drying you need will depend on how much storage capacity you have in your building. So moisture management, huge topic, but it's not just a simple thing about stopping it from getting wet, making sure it dries. you got to balance them all. Moisture problems can show up almost anywhere in the home. Uh, that's unfortunate, but it's a reality. That said, you know, the more common places where we have problems tend to be in the basement, where the building meets the wet ground, in the attic and the roof system where the rain falls on it, and often around plumbing and so on because of uh, failures in uh, washer hoses, uh, plumbing condensate and such like that. And then when we move to the walls, it's a lot of the places where discontinuities occur, where we install windows in the wall, where we put decks and attach them to the wall, uh, air conditioner units get pushed through the wall, all of those holes, uh, changes in plane, connections are where moisture tends to accumulate. But really it's, you know, roof and basement tend to be the places where we do the biggest mistakes and where we spend a lot of time trying to solve problems. But the walls, it's wherever we put holes in those walls. The most common misconception about moisture management in the past and still today, unfortunately, has been that you can actually stop a building from getting wet. And so because we have so many wonderful materials out there, house wraps and caulking and foam, the assumption is, is that the building's not going to get wet. And that causes a lot of trouble in that we need to design our buildings to know that some mistakes will happen and they need to allow drying. And that means flashing, that means drying capacity, that means building papers and house wraps. There's a whole range of new products that are both just have come out and are going to come out in the next few years that are really changing the way we build houses and build better houses. Uh, it's hard actually to just to list which products going to be the biggest difference, but the whole category of house wrap uh, it's just come from nowhere to being a critical component of a good building. Uh, different types of flashing materials, different types of windows, different types of insulations that also stop air leakage as well as heat flow. All these products are really, they're, they're changing in a, in a quiet revolution how houses have been built both in the last 10 years and I would say probably more in the next 10 years. There's a subsill flashing is now available that's deformable in three dimensions that allows you to easily and quickly put drainage underneath a window opening. Uh, there's new products in, in, in foam insulation that allow you to spray a, full, a cavity full of insulation that's also air tightness at the same time and completely fill it all up. Um, but there's also m materials now that are uh, smart and change depending on their properties, depending on what's needed. There are a vapor barrier that actually opens and closes depending on whether you're trying to stop wintertime condensation or opens up to let drying occur in the summertime if you have an accidental small leak. So there's, that, there's a family of products coming that are more intelligent, more sophisticated, but actually it doesn't necessarily make the builder's job much easier. It makes the job harder. They have to choose these materials more carefully, know what climate they make sense in, and, and so on. And so really the challenge to the builder is getting greater, even though the choice is larger and better. Well, the biggest uh, opportunities for comfort and energy savings are in uh, grasping new techniques as much as it is new products. It's the way we build that's as important as what we build of. And so although we, are, we have new products coming on market in, in, in the last 10 years, there are lots of good products on the market today that we can already use to make much more comfortable buildings uh, and much more durable and healthy buildings. Examples like that are, uh, say, cellulose insulation in stud bays, insulated sheathings, uh, air barriers and drainage planes. The, the techniques of putting all those pieces together to get a functional home, that's the biggest opportunity for low cost, sometimes no cost or savings, way of improving comfort, health, durability, and energy security by not having to worry about price spikes in the future. Well, if we don't build, the, put the pieces together properly, they're not going to work. Uh, you can have the best materials and uh, the best intentions, but if you don't implement properly, if you don't actually get the pieces properly connected in the right process, they're not likely to work. And that is another aspect that's changing in these modern products is that they're not forgiving of, of stupid mistakes. 
You, you have to use them in the proper way or you're going to have a problem. And that means the builders have to be more aware of what the limitations and the capability of these new products are and be able to make sure that they're properly installed, that the trades get it, the, the building code official gets it, even the insurance company gets it. Uh, everyone's got to understand what the new changes are and what the benefits are going to be and what the pitfalls could be. It's the same as in, in any industry. One has to have quality assurance and quality control if one's going to actually get the product you want. It's not enough to hire a sub-trade. It's not enough to specify a material. The job of the builder, the general contractor, is in fact to make sure that everything comes together. It's not just to select the right people. It's to make sure that the end product happens and coordinate between different trades. So, for example, insulation, installation, uh, one has to have some means of inspecting it, some means of guaranteeing that it actually is installed properly, uh, whether that be spot checks or constant supervision or performance checks through thermographic cameras and blower door tests. There's a whole range of options. What's the critical issue is that there is a quality assurance program in place that the general contractor can say, I wanted this outcome, and here's my means of assuring that I do get what I, I wanted uh, and what I paid for. Right. Well, in terms of some of the problem areas that we have in our, our homes, there are solutions available for almost all of them that we already can do today. It's a, it's a rearrangement of materials, a different selection of materials, and sometimes they cost more, but they have a dramatic impact on reducing your risk of callbacks and saving energy. An example of that would be insulation in the basement. Uh, this is a trend that more and more people are going to finish their basements because square footage is valuable and therefore that basement could be used. Using studs with uh, bad insulation is uh, a relatively risky and low performance means of insulating that basement and we know that. And it's relatively straightforward to add a, a layer of foam insulation, whether spray or board, and then put the studs in front. And that's just a change in technique. The products are already available. This is already being done by the thousands of houses. It's a matter of gaining the knowledge. And so the biggest opportunities at the least effort are not waiting for the new miracle product, but actually to learn the techniques that other builders have successfully used to get to a better building without paying a premium for it or too much of a premium for it. There's an increasing desire on the part of the consumer to have a building that works. In the old days, people would put up with a few drywall cracks, even squeaky stairs, etc. But in a world where people buy $70,000 Acuras and return it to the dealer the moment there's a scratch on it, um, houses that cost $300,000 have a very high expectation of performance. So rattly windows, cold drafts, cold spots, excessive energy consumption are considered simply unacceptable by many consumers. So it's not just a matter of doing a good job. It's good business sense to make sure that you deliver an acceptable product because the amount of management time and labor required to deal with the challenges, to the, the hit your reputation can take, let alone insurance, premiums, et cetera, uh, all say that we have to do a better job of building houses, more reliable job of delivering a good home and not have uh, problems uh, that cause all of those challenges, callbacks, management time, bad press, insurance premiums. One of the things that we, we have learned in the, in the last decade or two that we thought we had figured out were uh, some issues such as crawl space venting, which for many, many years was seen as the obvious thing to do. And now we know that, in fact, with modern houses, it makes very little sense, and it's usually a problem, as well as often more expensive. Another example is roof venting. In, in some climates, uh, ventilating the attic may cause as many moisture problems as it solves. And so that reevaluation of what it is that we're supposed to do um, extends to a number of other areas. But those are the two common ones. Also, vapor barriers is a third one where vapor barriers were thought to be a solution to moisture problems in the north and uh, applied recklessly in the south, they cause lots of problems. And even in the north now, it's being reevaluated as to when and where a vapor barrier is being used. Um, there's other concerns like uh, where you put your heating distribution system. Do you need to have a duct under every window? Well, not necessarily if you have very good windows. There's a product change that's changed what needs to be done and can have pretty significant implications for design and operation of the building.